Uh, Madam Speaker, we oppose this bill. Thank you. I call Maya Lubick. Madam Speaker, it's a pleasure for me to take this call on the second reading of the Education National, <laughs> National Education and Learning Priorities Amendment Bill. And this is the face of an embarrassed MP. Yes! <laughs> so, first of all, um, I'd like to congratulate my colleague Jen Tinetti for having her bill drawn and, and bring this legislation to the House. Um, I, I also like to echo the sentiments um, uh, from our previous speaker, uh, Minister, Honourable Minister Jen, Jenny Salisa, uh, with regards to, to Jen's long-standing and staunch advocacy in the area of education. And it seems um, uh, very uh, fitting on a, on a suffrage day that, that I take a moment to actually say thank you to, to um, my friend Jen Tinetti, whom I've only first met when I became an MP myself, and we had the, the sheer luck of, of having offices next to each other. And I've learned a tremendous amount of, of um, education-related information from Jen. So, so I'd like to say my thanks to that. Um, so it, it seems very clear, because um, our, our chair of the committee, Pamjeet uh, Pamir, keeps telling us that she's trying to understand well, she is the chair, so one would actually think she might understand, but so I'll explain. Um, we heard from quite a few speakers uh, previously, the Honourable Nikki Kay also mentioned it, that um, the member in charge of the bill, Jen Dinetti, considered the uh, government's ambitious and forward-thinking plan, a bit different from just reviews, very ambitious and forward-thinking plan in education. She heard the feedback from the submitters and then she wrote to us, she wrote to our select committee on the 19th of June and she asked if it would be prudent maybe Order. to maybe remove some of those... Do not have conversations across the House while someone is making a speech. Have some of these proposed substantial um, provisions That includes uh, you, Mr McAnulty. Uh, and it definitely includes you. All right. Thank you. Can we just settle, please? Thank you. My turn. Thank you. Maya Lubeck. <laughs> so she wrote to the committee. The committee considered it. So, so, so Jen Tinetti didn't tell us to remove it. The committee considered the merits of her request, and we considered it was a very reasonable request. So yes, I agree. This bill changed significantly from when it first came to the House and when we had our first reading speeches. But... Um, one can't say that this bill is completely gutted, like the Honourable Nikki Kay said, and it's not been a waste of time, like the chair of our committee has said. That is because what the, um, what the other side of the House is missing is that there is a crucial component of this bill that is um, preserved, and that is the wide consultation requirements. And these are not just a list of some extra people that the minister has to talk to. This is a very significant and important part of this bill. So I'd like to sort of go back to the beginning and talk about what this bill does, perhaps to aid to the understanding of the other side of the House. So this bill amends the Education Act 1989, and it requires the Minister of Education to consult very widely on the statement of the national education and learning priorities. And for obvious reasons, I will refer to that from now on as the NELP. Um, currently, what the minister does is they, uh, he, he or she consults um, with a couple of teachers that they like, or maybe some of the family. Uh, and under the current law, as it is, that would be completely sufficient as consultation. Now, we don't believe that is good enough. It is really important that children get a say on the education that they receive. And this bill will do that with some really explicit requirements that children and young people are consulted in forming the statement of the NELP. So, in line with many of the other investments that this government is making in education, this bill puts children back at the centre of learning. Oh. And it involves them in the process of creating any uh, changes to the statement of NELP. So what will wide consultation on the NELP do? Well, it will actually give a, an opportunity for children, young people, parents, whanau and employers to express their views on priorities for education. Existing requirements when develop, developing the NELP as it is now means that the minister must consult with those in ECE and education sector that he or she thinks should be consulted. What this bill does, it amends in clause 4, and what it does, it sets out a much wider range of stakeholders for consultation. 
Now, it's important to note also that this bill, as it originally came to us, only included six stakeholders. I think it was A2G, is that six? A2F? Anyway, it had six stakeholder groups to, con to consult with. But after we listened to the Select Committee submissions, the feedback really uh, must be clear on it, we needed to expand on that list. So as a result, for those of you that have the bill in front of you, you can see that the amended clause 4, the new section 1A, 4A, includes children and young people right at the top, but it also has another 11 named national bodies. Now, this is another thing that I would like to clarify, perhaps may um, help our chair. Um, she said that she, she, she thought that the um, wording was too, too prescriptive. Well, in fact, we had the officials tell us that the original wording needed to change so as to not be too prescriptive. So the uh, national representative organizations changed its wording to bodies representing the interests of. So I guess that point was missed. Um, the bill as it was originally drafted um, has been amended by majority and it has reflected that feedback that we received during the submissions. Uh, it has been mentioned already, we received 20 submissions in total on the original bill. Um, and this is the thing, yes, we have an incredibly busy and hard-working Education and Workforce Select Committee, but it is not much of a big deal to hear some of those, not all of the 20 wanted to be here, some of those submissions during uh, gaps that we have while we hear other submitters on other bills. What it did mean is that I had to have a very clear head on which education bill, whether it was Education Amendment 1, Education Amendment 2, Le NELP, uh, Teaching Council, but that is actually a very efficient way for us as a select committee to do our business. So it's also important to point out that of the 20 submitters, 17 submitted the, uh, supported the intent and direction. Uh, some of, our, some of uh, the submitters did ask us for further changes, and I guess the changes reflect um, uh, that feedback. Um, now, I'd like to make some comments on um, some of the submitters. So we had the um, Office of the Children's Commissioner uh, who expressed his strong support for the requirement to consult with children. So once again, this is a change that the opposition says hasn't really, uh, hasn't really got any effect. Judge Andrew Beecroft of the Children's Commissi Commissioner told the Select Committee that everything in the amendment bill is consistent with what we have seen come out of the consultation document. And on the consultation of children, so what this bill does, he stated that this bill is much more holistic and, I quote, he says, in fact, it's bang on. The Office of the Children Commissioner provided us with some verbatim feedback from their engagement with children and young people on the net. And it actually shows um, how important it is to get the children's voices heard. Uh, we want to make sure that they uh, reach their full potential, and, and we need to consider that, that achievement means different things to different people. So when the Children's Commissioner asked children what achievement means to them, they had comments like, it means gaining knowledge about myself, others, and the world around me. This was from a 13-year-old student. Another student said, knowing that you're more than capable to achieve the highest of your abilities. Another student, 14 years old, described the achievement as working to the best of my ability and also being confident about whether my life is going the right way. Now, the comments show that children have a range of views of what achievement means to them. And the objectives in the system should be to provide learning experiences that support children and young people the opportunity to reach their potential. Now, we had other submitters that pointed out how important it is that get, um, to get um, more stakeholders heard in the consultation process. The IHC commented they strongly support the proposed change to include a list of who must be consulted by the minister. They quoted New Zealand's obligations under Article 4 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And as a result of hearing them, we did include an extra stakeholder being national bodies representing the interest of the disability community. The National Council of Women of New Zealand, Te Kone Here A Wahine O Aotearoa, submitted their support ensuring that consultation is full and authentic. Uh, authentic. So once again, um, complete agreement and support. Um, so 
I'm really confused. You know, the National Party says there's nothing controversial about this bill. It's really nothing controversial, but yet let's vote against it. To me, it's like everything else that they do. They vote against something because they just don't want to support the good work that this government is doing. It is said because that's the children that will benefit from, that le from this legislation. So, uh, Madam Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. Thank you. I call the Honourable Tim McIndoe. Kia rana, Madam Speaker. Tēnā koutou e te whare.